Hi, this is Regeline Sabat, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Matthew Gardner. Matthew Gardner is the founder of Phoenix Rising Mastermind. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Oh, thanks, Gigi. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> You're welcome. Likewise, it's an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us about you and where you are from? Well, I'm in the Toronto, Canada area and uh, been here my whole life pretty well, grew up in this area. And right now we've got, you know, winter coming in, which isn't necessarily my favorite temperature wise, but, uh, you know, say la vie. And uh, that means such is life in, in France, <laughs> en français, which I do not speak beyond that term. And um, yeah, it's great to be here. I, my, my initiative is uh, Phoenix Rising. And I think that's, uh, you know, definitely something worthwhile talking about today. I love it. Tell us more about Phoenix Rising Mastermind. Yeah, so it's evolved from a mastermind. Now I'm using the term Phoenix Rising United because it's really about, um, you know, the idea of a mastermind is like a very close-knit kind of group where they're supporting one another. That's certainly an element of what I do, but I like the idea of it being a united movement. Um, and really my uh, vision with it is having um, hundreds of people, if not thousands, involved in this. And it was born out of my late fiance's passing. Uh, she passed away from terminal cancer in April of this year. And obviously, you know, it's um, sad to lose uh, someone we love in the physical form. But what I realized out of that is that our consciousness lives on and that uh, we always exist in some way, shape or form. And just like the idea that energy cannot be destroyed, it only changes form. Um, I found that to be the absolute truth with uh, Gail's passing. And so she's been supporting me from the spiritual realm ever since. And I have unlocked my awareness to a whole new level of consciousness and spiritual growth that previously wasn't really possible um, because I just didn't have the emotional capacity to understand it. But in her passing and through going through the grieving process and all the sadness coming up and all the tears that, that I had within me that I had no idea, um, that really unlocked something brand new inside myself and a, a new level of compassion and love and understanding of reality. And so that's really become my the basis of my work is empowering people to rise from the ashes of their past and reconstruct or construct an entirely new reality that they choose and prefer to live in. I love it. Now tell us more about your mental and emotional recovery. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a big deal. I mean, I I didn't even realize that I had that much grief and sadness inside of me. And, you know, the reason being is I was never really a super emotional person growing up. A lot of that was suppressed uh, from an early age. And it was in meeting Gail in 2015 where I started to unlock that and realize that I do have a deep capacity to love another human being and all human beings. And when she passed in the days just prior to it, um, man, the level of like, grief that was inside myself I, I didn't realize um, but every day I just uh, really plugged into it uh, rather than resisting it which you know I think a lot of people try and cope with this sort of thing or they try and you know be functional with it and I I just that wasn't my approach I just you know for hours a day would work on letting it go feeling it experiencing it allowing it to release from my system and it took about a month and a half to cleanse most of it to the point where I was now inspired to start helping people elevate themselves. I love it. Now tell us more about the love and spiritual awareness you awakened to. Well, I mean, this is, you know, very outside the box for a lot of people, but I'll just share it directly. So the, the morning before my fiance passed, uh, she actually came to me in spirit. And there's stories like this of people having like near death experiences and having connection with you know, spiritual realms and stuff like that. So it's not totally unusual. And I'd read about it and I've known some people in my life who have had similar experiences, but I've never had such a direct communication in my life. And basically what happened was um, I, I woke up at about 5.30 in the morning um, and my laptop had turned on and it started playing this YouTube video. And it was regarding a project that I was working on that was a tribute to my fiance. And it kind of woke me up and I'm like, well, you know what? I could go turn it off and disrupt my sleep or I'll just let it kind of play out. So I let it play out. And um, when it finished, I started kind of dozing off a little bit. But then I got this kind of all these thoughts coming into my mind regarding uh, my mother-in-law. Actually, it was a situation going on there and just getting these ideas about how to approach that. And, and then 
suddenly it was like this dictation of a letter and it said like, dear mom, you are such a great mom and this is why, and this is why I chose to leave at this time. And it was really this like profound message. And I'm like, wow, those aren't my own thoughts. Those are coming from somebody else clearly. Um, and then, you know, it was clear that it was Gail. I could just, you know, hop along, obviously, but I could feel it too. And then I'm like, well, that's a great message. I'll probably wait a few hours until I actually get out of bed to write it. And then I just try going back to sleep. And, uh, you know, guess what happened, Gigi, is like I started getting my body got really warm. And I started getting this intense pressure on my left ear. And basically, you know, that was like Gail, like literally from the spiritual side, kicking my butt out of bed to go write this letter because, you know, heaven forbid I forget it. So I did that. And uh, I gave uh, my mother-in-law this letter very with a lot of hesitation because I was like, I, I don't know how she's going to respond. I mean, I know she's spiritual, but this is new to me and I have no idea. But luckily she received it quite well. And then from there, I ended up receiving all these other messages um, for friends and family from Gail, which was you know, very reassuring for many of them. And, and then it's just kind of continued in, in various capacities ever since. That is incredible. Now, you do have a question from the audience here. Justin Crane says, with the loss of your loved one, did it make you lose faith or believe in God? Well, thanks. That's a great question. So uh, I definitely didn't lose anything. I mean, even even the idea of like losing a loved one. I, I, I mean, at first we have that grieving process, right, where we have a deep emotional connection to another human being in their body. And so there's a, there's a process, I think, that everyone must go through. Um, but on the other side, my you know faith definitely increased to a whole new level because it's like I, I know God is real. I know heaven is real. And now I feel like I'm living with one foot in heaven and one foot on earth. And, you know, not a lot of people have the privilege of that experience. But I feel like it's my my role now to share that with people in whatever way they're able to accept it. And that's what gives me the greatest sense of fulfillment. Amen. Now tell us more about how you use your awakened gifts to serve spiritual entrepreneurs. Well, I mean, for me, it's all about intuition and creativity because we all reach a point where we're following systems and, you know, it's very systematic in building a business and, and it can be a very left brained endeavor for a lot of people. And, you know, that's fine because it's very functional, gets the revenue going and that's great. But there does come a point where it's like, well, why are we actually in business? It's obviously not just about the money. That's an aspect of it. But, you know, we're serving other people. And how do we serve other people? Well, what I'm reminded of right now is what Albert Einstein said. He said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. And that's what we're consistently doing in the world is we're creating problems for ourselves so that we can grow and then find higher minded solutions. So from a place of intuition and creativity, we can actually tap into those higher minded solutions and create really elegant ways of people transforming their lives in, in the case of like what I'm doing. But really what that translates into is people generating more profit in their business, impacting more people, having more fulfillment, making it easier, having a deeper sense of relaxation or peace as they go through the process and really understanding that this power of God is like the electricity running in our home. It's powering our home. It can power our brain and body and our inspiration. And life doesn't have to be like a nose to the grindstone sort of approach. And so that's really what I've been privileged to empower people to unlock within themselves. It's just a greater level of grace and ease in what they're doing in their business. That is absolutely amazing. Now tell us more, what is your greatest accomplishment in your life? Well, you know, that's a great question. I have um, had a lot of challenges through my life growing up. You know, everything from my parents divorcing when I was three, and that led to a lot of inner conflict. They didn't communicate with one another at all. So, well, very seldom, very rare, um, very limited. So that made it very challenging. In a lot of ways, I raised myself. And so even making it through childhood, <laughs> I would say is a great accomplishment because, you know, unfortunately, um, there's a lot of people that grow up in, in a level of conflict and they don't, they don't really make it out or they get involved with the wrong crowd and they end up in like prison or with drugs or things of that nature. And I, I certainly had exposure to those. It never felt... Um, like my truth to get too involved in that, but I did um, explore it as a, as a theme of exploration and realized ultimately it wasn't the path I wanted to go down, but I had a few close encounters with the police and just really growing out of that. And my big wake up call over 10 years ago was being assaulted by a police officer on the side of the freeway, um, which, you know, obviously there were some 
circumstances that led up to that. But basically, uh, he ended up pulling me out of the car for speeding. I'd been drinking and full on assault, um, including him kicking me in the face. And I had this big boot mark on my face for a few weeks afterwards. And just making it through that was really probably the first accomplishment that that comes to mind in the sense that like it was a big um, practice of faith, like, hey, like, this could be really bad. I was in school for criminology simultaneously. So that would have ended any potential career in in that field. And um, I was like, man, I could end up with some big fine. I could end up in prison. And it was just so eye opening too, because I was learning all the theory of policing and the criminal justice system. And then I was seeing, you know, how it actually operates in the, in the world. And I'm like, wow, you know, just, just a total shift in viewpoints on, on how things work, but a blessing. And, you know, it's not a political thing or anything like that. I don't hold any grudge or you know, say it's right or wrong. I don't condone it, obviously, but it's obviously what I needed as well to wake up and step into a new reality. So that's really where I took the pivot of, you know, trying to figure things out and knowing that I wasn't doing the right thing, but not really looking for an answer to just saying, hey, now it's absolutely time to find the answer and I, I better do it because there's no other choice. And I'm glad I put myself in that position. And ever since then, I've had a great capacity just to know when it's time to move on and when it's time to let go of an old paradigm. And that to me is really one of the greatest accomplishments I've ever received. Amen. Very powerful. Now you have, again, Justin Crane says, don't let that incident with the officer grow hate within you. It's an attempt by evil to cause divide. And Justin, thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate you. Oh yeah, no, that's so great. And like, that's a great point because you know, a lot of people go through things like this and and they hold a grudge or a vendetta or they feel like a victim. And I just never felt that way first and foremost. And I was never like, why me? I mean, I knew I did the wrong, the things that got me in the situation. Um, And I was really happy when it wrapped up and it worked out really well. And, you know, just kind of a kind of surreal experience for sure, but um, everything cleared itself up and it worked out and I learned my lessons. And I think that's what everything's all about is learning a lesson and deciding, hey, now it's time to move on to the next lesson. I don't have to, I don't have to surrender to the past. I can surrender to a future that's brighter and happier. That's right. I always say, leave the past in the past, but take the lesson with you. So mm-hmm. very powerful. Now, what is your why that keeps you going? Well, there's this inner fire within me that's just about spiritual teaching and and sharing my experiences and my story with others and. The idea of like everything in life can be used for a positive purpose is really my main message. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people in the world right now amidst COVID and the economy and things of that nature that they don't see it that way. They see things like distorted and negative. And granted, there's a people going through a lot of great challenges. I, I, I acknowledge that. But I believe that every challenge we have is actually a gift from God and that it's an opportunity to grow and it's an opportunity to learn. And if we're using it in that fashion, we accept it in that manner. Then, then it becomes something really positive and we don't have to be beaten down by it. We don't have to feel like a victim of life, but we can feel like the hero of our journey. Amazing. Now tell us more about some of the projects that you're currently working on. Well, the biggest one is this Phoenix Rising United initiative. And what it is right now is a masterclass. So every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, it's free for people to attend. And I host about a two hour masterclass where people come in and they really get a taste of this experience of transformation because it's tough to describe what transformation is. I mean, many of your viewers, including yourself, have obviously been through transformation, so you know the idea, but it's kind of like describing like green tea taste to somebody. It's like you you can't, you just got to taste it for yourself. So so I invite people to check it out. Um, And uh, I know you have the the website there, but basically if they check out Phoenix Rising United on Facebook, they'll find my group where it is right there. Um, facebook.com slash group slash Phoenix Rising United and people can join in and it's free to attend and you'll get a deep experience of what this transformational work is all about. Wonderful. Now, besides the aha moment you had after Gail's passing, was there another aha moment that you experienced in your life? Well, that is awesome because, you know, I'd say like almost every day now with the the epiphanies of um, how to help people is really the biggest thing. And more recently, it's been about the branding and marketing process of my business and really tapping into something that ignites people. And even like this Phoenix Rising initiative is fairly recent. And a mentor of mine has said um, to me that you need to get a logo 
And I'm like, a logo? Like, what the heck are you talking about? i just been using my name and my face. Like, why do I need a logo? But, you know, I was receptive to it. And the next day, I was looking for a stock image, and this phoenix just popped out. And for the first time, because like I said, I'm not, like, super emotional when it comes to, like, words and images and things. But I saw this image of a phoenix, and it just, like, ignited something in me. And then this idea of phoenix rising just came into my mind, and it felt so inspired. And I'm like, I think this is exactly what my mentor was talking about. And so I just began implementing it and I've gotten really excellent feedback. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize how popular it was in spiritual circles, but so many people that I um, connected with and shared it with have all had some kind of experience with Phoenix rising or, or the idea of the Phoenix and the spiritual power of it. Very powerful. Now, before you mentioned that you witnessed your parents go through divorce as well, how did that have an impact on your life when you were growing up? Yeah, that definitely shaped my my reality for a long time and still does in, in the sense that it's now become like a positive platform for understanding human psychology and things of that nature. But, um, you know, they were young. Uh, I was they were both 27 when I was born and um, neither one of them grew up in like super functional households um, like they, you know, got enough to you know survive in that. And and on my dad's side, you know, he, he got, became very successful in business. And he was very driven. And my mom had a lot of um, challenges, uh, you know, just from emotional standpoint and with relationships and social dynamics. So they really weren't a great match for one another other than to have me as their son. And uh, <laughs> and then from there, you know, they really like couldn't communicate with one another. So I would visit both their households, but just because their worldviews were so different and their styles of communication were so different, they didn't have a really healthy way or plan of raising me. Um, so that wound up with me just having a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of anxiety, a lot of confusion. And by the time I got into my late teens, I just got sick and tired of it. So I started using cannabis to cope with all these emotions. And then that's what led into getting involved with the wrong crowd. And then I got into getting into um, drinking every day and smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. And even got involved in like retail crime for a period of time. And that's what I alluded to. I had a few close encounters with the police and learned my lessons, thank God. Um, and then from there, with that behavior, that's what ultimately led to me getting assaulted by a police officer on the freeway when I got pulled over for speeding. So that all roots back to that, um, you know, their separation in a sense. And I'm not by any means blaming them because I fully believe it was my life theme to explore this and learn from it. Um, but that had a major impact in allowing me to learn the lessons that I needed to learn in order to become the man that I now am. Amen. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now tell us more about what gives you happiness in your life. Well, I do absolutely love this idea of like the word of God. And, you know, it's, for me, it's not so much religious. It's just spiritual power that there's a source power in all of us and we have access to it. And the idea that we can all access it to, to it, to whatever degree is most relevant for our lives. Uh, I, I love sharing that message. So that makes me very happy. And then on a personal note, um, the idea of relationships, you know, the one thing I learned from Gail is like my capacity to love another human being is so immense. And one thing I learned from her is that there's two types of people in the world. There's gallon people and there's pint people and gallon people, meaning like they have gallons of love to give, gallons of love to receive and pint people, not there's like anything wrong with them or they're less, but they just don't have that ability yet. You know, and maybe they're growing into it or whatever. But I realized, man, I'm like a gallon person and I need that in my life. So I'm, I'm in the process of exploring that with a, a new partner, but, um, you know, it's so great to know that like there are people out there, you know, like Gail that have that capacity to love. And when I find the right person, amen. Uh, that's another aspect that brings me a lot of happiness. Amen. I love it. Now, Amber Lyons here, she says, good stuff, Matthew. And Justin Crane says, I'm stating the obvious here, but just so you know, there are millions of people whom can relate to your adversity. That makes you an inspiration. Uh -huh. I agree. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Justin. Yeah, that's a great message. Yeah, it's very powerful. Now, Matthew, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Well, I'd say to be yourself. I mean, that's the one thing I struggled with my whole life is I felt like I couldn't be myself. You know, like with my dad, I felt like I needed to be a certain way. And then with my mom, kind of so similar, different experience, but kind of similar. And, you know, the idea is like, you know, if you just be true to who you are and be honest with yourself about who you are, whether that means in business or your personal life or your beliefs about reality. But 
the idea is like, hey, at, at our core, we all have this ability to be that loving, kind person. But how does that translate for you? And what does that look like for you? And it doesn't have to conform to other people's standards. And I think if we just really honor and respect ourselves, then that's what gives us the greatest sense of happiness in life. Very powerful. Now, Lori says, oh, I love that concept on gallon and pints. And Justin says the major difference for you and them is you kept your faith, whereas several of them did not. You went on to better and they more than likely are sulking in their in inequity. <laughs> in yeah. Equity. Yes. yeah. And I, no, that's a great point, because, you know, that and that's the idea of people not being true to themselves. Right. Like if they feel like a victim, they're not being honest with like the situation like they created it. And it's not to create to suffer, it's create to create to grow. And if you're truly being honest with yourself, then that part of you comes out. And then you can really identify with this idea of being true to who you actually are. I love it. Matthew, thank you so much for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. I appreciate you. Now, where can the audience find you? Yeah, so if they just check out me on facebook.com slash group slash Phoenix Rising United, they can join the master class every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It'd be a privilege for me to have you there. And from there, I can share my life's work with you. And we're, we're, all, we're all in it together. So I look forward to seeing people there and sharing my gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Matthew on Facebook at his group, Phoenix Rising United. And Matthew, again, thank you so much for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. I appreciate you. Thanks, Gigi. You're welcome. Have a blessed day.